Of Matthew chapter 27, read verse 1. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. Come on. And when they laid bound, had bound him, they laid him away and delivered him to, uh, to Pontius Pilate. So this, this chapter 27, Matthew 27, this is Christ before uh, Pilate. Come on. And they delivered it to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, See, I saw that he was condemned, what he did? Repented himself uh -huh. and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. Saying, After he already did his body, he repented, but it was too late. Come on. Saying, I have sinned, and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to what is that to us? You say, what is that to us? We don't care. Come on. See thou to that. And that's that's on you. That's your that's your couple of feet, pretty much. You already did what you did. It, we have nothing to do with it. Come on. And he cast down the pieces of silver. I should just get that in uh, Exodus twenty three and verse seven real quick. So I'll just read through this because we're gonna read almost the whole chapter of twenty seven. Actually half of it. Read that real quick. This is the book of Exodus. So 23 what? 23, 7. Chapter 23, verse 7. Keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous slay thou not. You see that? And that's what Judah did. He slayed the innocent. He slayed him and betrayed the innocent blood. So go back. I'm going to stop precepting and just get to the point. It's going to take us even longer time. Come on. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 5. Read. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple, and departed, and went and hanged himself. Come on. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for, for to put them into the treasury, because it is a price of blood. And they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in it. Wherefore... That field was called the field of blood until this day. Come on. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value. Verse 10, And gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord appointed me. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. And when he, he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. You see that he answered nothing, and that's what uh, Isaiah was prophesying in Isaiah 53 and verse 7. When he was asking him, he said nothing. He said, Thou sayest. So jump, well, for the sake of time, jump from there, go to verse 18. Verse 18. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. See that for envy. They have delivered him, them Pharisees, them scribes, for envy, that's, that's what in black, black people, man, envy, a lot of envy, that's why they deliver Christ, read. Really. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife said unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that, that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. She that the most I troubled uh, trouble her in, in, uh, in her dream, troubled the hair out of her in her dream, come on. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barnabas and destroy Jesus. That's the key thing right there. They persuaded the multitude. Because the multitude, they didn't want us to pull Christ. They didn't want us to say crucify him, crucify him. But them wicked men that was among the people, the scribe and Pharisee, they persuaded the people to, to, uh, to turn on Christ. Come on. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barnabas. Pilate said, said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. See that? He said, Let him be crucified. That's what it said. We can be bored. Let's go to verse 29. Let's try to speak to it. Verse 29. And when they had plot, planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head, and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed, they bowed the knees before him. And mocked him, saying, Hell, king of the Jews. And the heavy thing about it, they bow down their knees, right? And when Christ comes, what does scripture say? All these shall bow. 
Right. They was buying and mocking him, but when he come back, he go mock them and put them to death. Come on. Verse 30. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came up, out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. Come on. And when they were coming to a place called Golgotha. See, that's the place. When they were come to a place. Come on. That is to say, a place of a skull. So that's what they call it as well, the place of the skull. Or sometimes they call it Calvary. You understand? Read that from the top again. Verse 33. And when they were come unto the, a place called Golgotha, uh -huh. that is to say, a place of a skull. So read verse 50. Verse 50. Come on. Jesus, when he had cried with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. See, so that place, that's why he was crucified. That place, that's why he was crucified. So why was he crucified there? That's the question. What's significant about that place? You understand? So go to uh, John 19, read verse 17 real quick. John 19, read verse 17. It's the book of John, chapter 19, verse 17. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of the skull. See that? That's how uh, John referred to it, the of the skull. Come on. Which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha. Come on. Where they crucified him, and two other with him, on either side one, and Jesus in the midst. Read. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews. For the place where Jesus was crucified. See that for the place where Jesus was crucified. Come on. Was nigh to the city. See that it was nigh to the city. So it was nigh to the city. What nigh mean? Near the city. It wasn't in the city. Do everybody understand that? It wasn't in the city, it was near the city. In another word, it was outside the gates. Do we understand, sis, brothers and sisters? Come on, y'all, y'all sleep? He wasn't crucified in the gate. He was crucified near the city, which is what? Outside of the city. I want everybody to follow me. Everybody to follow me. Read verse 20 one more time. Verse 20. That's the reason why he was, he was crucified outside the gate. Outside, that's the reason for that. Come on. This title did read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. It was near the city. Come on. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and in Latin. This See that? So it was not in the city. He wasn't crucified in the city. He was crucified outside the city, outside the gate. So get John one verse twenty nine real quick. We'll tie everything together. Why was he crucified in Calvary? Oh, God, the God Come on. This is the book of John, chapter 1, verse 29. Read. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of so, God. So John knew, he, he, know, he was the one that opened the pie for Christ. So when he saw uh, Christ, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. What do our forefathers and uh, foremothers do with the Lamb in the Old Testament? <laughs> They were used for sacrifice, right? Used for sacrifice. That's that's key. Come on. Which taketh away the sin of the world. Back then, it used to take away the sin of individual. What we do, we go to the priest. It takes away our sin. So now, John look at Christ and say, Oh, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And we all know that the world is Israel. So we understand that. The Lamb represents Christ. So now, let's read... Let's read the law concerning sin offering and what the priest was doing. Let's read that. Let's go to uh, Leviticus chapter 4. Leviticus chapter 4. Because that was the reason why he was crucified over there. It wasn't just by coincidence. That was the reason. Leviticus 4, read verse 1. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, if a soul shall sin through ignorance... And so we're dealing with sin. We're dealing with sin. Come on. 
against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which, which ought not to be done, and shall do against any of them. Come on. If the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin. So this one is going to the priest, if the priest sin. So there are certain things do the priest have to do when they sin as well. Come on. When she has sinned, a young bullet without blemish. So a young bullet without blemish, come on. Unto the Lord for a sin offering. See, that has a key, that's the key thing for a sin offering. So read verse 11. Verse 11. So this is going into the, the priest, if the priest sin. The priest has been anointed, if that priest sin, this is what the priest got to do. Read verse 11. And the skin of the bullet, and all the flesh, with his head, and with his legs, and his inwards, and his dung, even the whole bullet shall he carry forth without the camp. Without what? Without the camp. Without. Keep, pay attention. Without the camp, right? Come on. Unto a clean place. So that without the camp, right? So that's for the priest. So now, now the congregation, which is the nation of Israel, read verse 20. Verse 20. Come on. And he shall do with the bullet as he did with the bullet for a sin offering. So this is concerning sin offerings regarding what? The congregation. Come on. So shall he do with it with this. And the priest shall make an atonement for them. Come on. And it shall That's why they say for them, because this is going to the congregation in general. Read. And it shall be for be forgiven them. Uh-huh. And he shall carry forth the bullet without the camp. See that without the camp. Without the camp. Without the camp. Which would mean outside the city. Come on. And burn him as he burnt the first bullet. It is a sin offering for the congregation. See that for the congregation. That's what he used to do. You don't you don't kill that or that lamp or that bullet in the gate. You take it outside. That's for sin offering. For the priest and for the entire congregation. And uh, Daniel 9, verse 11 said, All oh, Israel has sinned. And that's why he's saying, Son Christ to God for us, right? So now let's go to Exodus 29. Exodus 29, read verse 14. Exodus 29, read verse 14. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 29, verse 14. Actually, yeah, read that. But the flesh of the bullock and his skin and his dung shall thou burn with fire without the camp. See that? Without the camp. Same thing. Without the camp. Come on. It is a sin offering. It is a sin offering. So now hold what you got. You want to read that again. Go back to John 1 and 29. Because it said, you should what? It said, but the flesh of the bullet and his skin and his dung shall thou burn with fire outside the camp. It is a sin offering. So read that. It's the book of John, chapter 1, verse 29. Come on. The next day, John seeth Jesus unto him, coming unto him, and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. You see that? He said, Behold, the Lamb of God. That's our sacrifice. That's our... Uh, that's our offering for our sin because what all Israel sin was committing all kind of folly to the Father saying Christ. Come on. Which taketh away the sin of the world. You see that which taketh away the sin of the world. So go back to Exodus 29, read verse 14 one more time. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 29, verse 14. Uh -huh. But the flesh of the bullet and his skin and his dung shall thou burn with fire without the camp. Without the camp, read. It is a sin offering. It is a sin offering. So let's go back to Matthew 27 and read verse 33 again. Why was he crucified over there? Why? What's significant about that place? Because what? From the starting, from our forefather, the priest, whenever it comes to sin offering, they always burn it without the camp. They always take it out of the city. Read. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 33. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled it with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him, and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vessel, my, my vesture, did they cast lots. 
Re reverse, let me see. Mm. Reverse 45. Verse 45. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And this was this was uh, his lowest point because he was going to it. This was his lowest point. Come on. Some of them that stood there, when they heard that said, this man called for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let be. Let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. And after he yielded the ghost, stuff, stuff changed, man. Stuff was going all different. Come on. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. From the top to the bottom, the whole temple, come on. And the earth did quake. Earthquake immediately. Come on. And before that, there was an uh, eclipse. Before that, there was an eclipse. Come on. And the rocks rent. Come on. And the graves were open. The grave was what? And the graves were open. Heavy stuff right here. The graves was open. Come on. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Was dead body. The graves opened. Dead body arose. And started walking. Heavy stuff that was happening here. Heavy stuff. Heavy stuff. Come on. It came out of the grave. Came after, out of the grave. Came out of the grave. Read. After his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. See that it went into the holy city. Why? Because it wasn't in this holy city. It was in a different place. Outside the gate. So it went in the holy city. Holy city of Jerusalem. It went in the holy city, and then what? It appeared to many. They appeared to many. So as we read that, the reason why Christ was uh, crucified, in Calvary was because that's how he always been. He was that sin offering for the nation of Israel. He was that sin offering. And when it comes to sin offering, you don't prepare it within the gate. You prepare it outside of the gate. So let's get Hebrews. Hebrews 13. Hebrews, Hebrews 13. Read verse 11. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 11. Come on. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burnt without the camp. Read it one more time. For the bodies of the beast, of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin. See that for sin. So now he's giving, that's a flashback. He given, he's giving some history. He's giving us some history. Read it one time, one more time. For the bodies of those beasts. Those beasts. Who was offering, for, who was offering or ministering those? It's the priest. It was a priest, so now he's giving us, he's giving us a, a reflection on the past. Come on. Whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin. For sin offering, and Christ was that lamb to take away our sins. Come on. Or burned without the camp. Burned without the camp. That's what was reading the Old Testament. Come on. Wherefore, Jesus also. See that? Wherefore, Jesus also. Come on. That he might sanctify the people which he, his own, with his own blood suffered without the gate. You see that? Suffer without the gate. Same thing. Same thing. Read that scripture one more time. Verse 12. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. Sanctify the people, which is us. Which is us. Because he came and died and took away our sins. You understand? Sanctify the people. Make us clean again. So we can get our mind right. Read. Suffer without the gate. Suffer without the gate. Suffer without the gate. That's why they took him over there to crucify him. Do everybody understand? All yes, praise I told you that was going to be short. He used Amen. to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. 
We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.